88.9 WERS. Hi, I'm Nina from 88.9 WERS, and we're here with Kevin Parker of Tame Impala. How are you? Good, thanks. Great. Uh, so you guys have been touring for a really long time now. I mean, just in 2013 alone, you started out doing a U.S. tour. You've gone to Europe, back to Australia, and then you did the whole festival route for a while. Uh, have you gotten a chance to go back to Australia and just kind of recharge for a week or so before starting this one? Um, yeah, we actually... Um finally got some time last month uh i mean we we all kind of shot off to different places we all kind of like just did that on the last show you know like don went to amsterdam and uh jay goes to melbourne now so we all just went to different places but we all just got to chill out although you know we ended up just doing more stuff you know <laughs> like we had um the other, some of the other guys recorded an album i went to london for some reason you know, we're like, we, we think we need time off and then we end up just doing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Whenever you're on tour, is there anything that you guys miss from Australia? Uh, either like friends and family or just like comfort food. I imagine not having Vegemite's a bit of a struggle. Yeah, it is It is difficult to go without Vegemite, but a little bit of planning can uh, can get you a tube of Vegemite in the bus <laughs> so that, you know, I mean, you have to put on a bagel, but that's yeah. okay. Um, wait, what was the question again? Oh, just if you, like when you're touring, certain oh, yeah, things you miss. Yeah, I mean, well, we all have girlfriends, so we um, obviously miss them a lot. Um, the air in Australia is quite fresh, you know. it's it, you, you don't think much of it when you're there. And then when you step off the plane after a long tour anywhere else in the world, it's just that, you know, you can smell the kind of desert. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's very refreshing. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, Perth's pretty laid back, so it's it's always nice to go home and just do nothing yeah. you know so now you guys are starting off your tour uh opening for the flaming lips which is huge so how are you guys feeling about that i know boston's your first stop mm-hmm. uh i'm quivering with excitement i don't think i've ever been this excited for a tour in my life you know um i haven't even had a coffee today and i'm just like jittering with <laughs> oh wait no i have had coffee sorry um but uh yeah you know, I uh, I think it's kind of like it's one of those fantasies for us that we're finally living out. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's funny the guys came in before. We've just been playing like we had a little like session of show and tell, you know, because we've all, we've all got like crazy effects and stuff all over the stage, and we we're sort of going around each other's stuff like, oh, what do you got? I got a oh, Mitron biphase phaser, <laughs> you know. Oh, what's this? Yeah. You know, we're like doing this little like showing each other our toys. Yeah. It's very childish. So how did this in the best possible way? Yeah. How did this tour come about? Did they reach out to you guys, or was it like because you both are people, as you're saying, uh, who have a lot of effects and fun sounds to your shows? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know to be honest. I'm not sure that any one person actually initiated. I think it was just like something that was bound to happen eventually, and so it is just happening, and that's that's all I know about it. Um. So, what kind of material are you guys going to be playing? I know. Like having an opening slot, obviously, versus uh, versus a headlining slot's different, uh, and especially to um, lonerism has been so successful. It's on so many top ten lists from last year. Do you feel like you lean more towards that because of that, or do you try to play stuff from uh, you know earlier stuff as well, including like your EPs? Oh yeah, there's a good mix. I think it's just one of the advantages of having more than one album. It was such a luxury once we had two albums to pick from, you know, because then it becomes like a playlist not just you know playing all the songs from one album so um yeah no it's it's i think it's a good like half and half and there's a lot of things that aren't even on any albums they're not really even songs they're just kind of like weird jams or segues but that's kind of um you know they become my favorite parts in the set i mean it's not just playing a song exactly how it is in the album it's doing something different you know yeah and i know for you guys uh a lot of times live you do like extended jams and you like work around the song so that it becomes much longer but recently you've almost been remixing some of your songs live and they sound pretty different so how did that come about was that a conscious decision did you just want to try it with a different sound um i don't know how it came about it's kind of just something that we love to do um it's just you know we don't record the song as a band like by the time we play it as a band it's already the song is kind of finished so we just see it as kind of like we just take the song as it is, you know, and we, like, think about what's going to sound the coolest, you know, which parts will sound the coolest and which parts we don't need to do, you know, because they don't 
not going to be as fun to play them live. Yeah. So, you know, we can just like extend bits, shorten bits, take bits out, put new bits in, make a, just a completely new song. It's almost as though like, you know, it's like we're playing the song as though it was recorded in a parallel universe, you know, when certain decisions weren't made in the studio to make the chorus there or instead of, you know, one night that I thought of one melody, it's, you know, it was like if, if I did it on a different night and thought of a different melody, you know, it's just... I like that, that's how I like to think of it. Awesome. And then what's it like, too, for you guys? Because I imagine when Lonerism came out and then you started seeing all of these, like, really great reviews and great praise for the album, what was that like for you guys, having all of that accumulate over the course of the year and pushing until now? Um, uh, it's always flattering, obviously. Um, I mean, I think you, you kind of get desensitized to that kind of thing. You know, if if, like... If a million people say your album is terrible, by the by the hundredth person you're not going to care anymore. And if people say it's amazing, then by the hundredth person you're not going to care anymore. You know, like yeah. so. I mean, people's opinions. Um, you know, at, at, when the album first came out, I was you know, I'm always kind of curious about what people think, or even like curious to see what people actually think it sounds like. Because by the time you finish an album. You, your perception of what it sounds like is completely skewed. You know, it doesn't, doesn't, you don't, I mean, only now I'm starting to hear the album in a way that pe- other people do, you know. When it first came out, I thought it sounded like the Backstreet Boys. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, so, I mean, it's, it's kind of a curiosity more than anything else. But, um, yeah, and then after a while, you, you just, you know, you kind of, people think what they think, or, you know, doesn't really have an effect after a while. So what kind of sound were you going into the studio expecting with that, uh, if now you feel like you're finally hearing it the way everyone else does? Um, well, it's, I mean, yeah, it's funny. I, I, like, when I listen to it now, I kind of I feel like I'm almost listening to it as someone that didn't make it, you know, just like another music listener or whatever. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, it's some pretty crunchy dream pop psychedelic stuff you know i can i can hear the, the like the beatles comparisons finally mm-hmm. um yeah you know is that something you didn't uh notice originally like when you guys were making this not at all um so when the first, when people first started saying it i was like oh come on that's it's the long hair isn't it you know yeah. but um now i can kind of hear it. it's like oh yeah that does kind of that does have some pretty beatles-esque vocal melodies or whatever you know yeah. um but it's cool you know it's always been a compliment yeah. um yeah and then do you feel like you normally hear different feedback from fans depending on where you are like because I, I feel like a mul- uh, multiple of artists say that you know coming to america the fans here are very different than those uh in london or australia or like even paris mm-hmm. um i guess so i mean Everything happens so quickly on stage. I forget to interpret <laughs> how <laughs> audiences are different. Mm-hmm. But, um, I mean, Americans are generally really loud and, and passionate. You know, they can, they can just be the best audiences. They usually are, you know. I think there's, there's like a, just like a, such a, you know, not to say that the rest of the world is more passionate about music, but... You know, nowhere else in the world do, do people follow you or like from show to show. It seems like this kind of thing here where it's like, I'm going to follow this band on tour, you know, mm-hmm. behind their tour bus or whatever. You know, that, that just, I mean, it's, for me, it's a good example of how, um, how dedicated people are to listening to music in America. Yeah. And it shows everywhere. Awesome. Uh, and then so WERS, we're a non-commercial station and we play a lot of local acts and bigger acts as well. So how, for you, either growing up or as a musician, has non-commercial radio been of a help? Um, I don't think there are many radio stations in <laughs> Perth. I mean, we've got, like, one indie one. And, um, I mean, yeah, for what, for what we do, it's, um, it's invaluable. It's, um, is that the right word? You know, it's, it's, pr- it's, it's essential. Um, I mean, there are a lot of other parts of the world where places don't have that. They don't have, like community radio and just alternative radio stations where like bands that don't play radio friendly music can get played you know and so anywhere you are that where there is something like that you notice that there's just like music flourishes because people aren't afraid to do something bold or 
or left of centre because maybe they won't get played on the radio. You know, they just they just do it and people get behind them and it, and people hear it. You know, it just it works. Well, thank you for stopping by. Once again, my name's Nina from 88.9 WERS, and we're here with Kevin Parker of Team Apollo. Thank you. No worries. 88.9 WERS.